Today, I want to talk about the ridiculous standards that we see in our lives. Everything from video game companies just making the absolute worst products after they've spent countless years and money making just an absolute t terrible product to people flipping out and losing their cool and going just completely crazy over their fast food order being made slightly wrong or missing an ingredient or two. And you may be thinking, how do these two subjects intertwine? What do they have to do with each other? And that's what you're going to find out in today's video. So to start out, I'm going to talk about a developer from Intrepid Studios. Now who or what is Intrepid Studios? Those are the people that are making Ashes of Creation, the most currently hyped biggest MMORPG that everyone's looking forward to playing. How much does this developer make, you say? Well, he told me that he makes over 100,000 before bonuses, before his health care, his dental care, his investments, his stock options, and all that kind of fun stuff. Before all of that, he makes over $100,000 a year. He does work 40 hours a week. Well, technically he works 40 hours a week, but realistically he doesn't actually do that much work to begin with. So he was telling me about one of his hardest days, and, and again, I shared a Discord with this guy. He was verified that he did work for Intrepid Studios. He's not just some guy pretending or LARPing or whatever, okay? He told me that one of his hardest days was he had to code an interaction in the game where he you the player steps into a circle like a like a capture point or something or like a node and then over the next 10 seconds it will change from like a bright color to a darker color okay i'm going to be a little vague cuz i want to protect who he is i don't want him to get in trouble over this video or whatever okay so he told me in order to program that into the game it was about one paragraph or so of coding which I don't know what that means, maybe that's like 20, 30, 50 lines. I don't know what a paragraph is or what he's referencing for a paragraph, but he told me that it took him 15 minutes of his time in order to properly code it and then make sure that it works. So in 15 minutes, he was able to make it where when you step in a circle, it changes colors. And that was it. The rest of the day was spent chatting with his coworkers, hanging out at the coffee area, the snack area, the water area, well, I guess a water cooler? He, he called it the watering area. Which he's a known drunk in the Discord that, that I frequented. I, I don't frequent it anymore. But um, perhaps it was something more than water, okay? And he was telling me how stressful this was and how much it drained him. And it just took all of his effort and energy in that 15 minutes time. But the rest of the, the day, he cooled off, he went to the snack area, he sat in the quiet room, he played on the company's ping pong table with a few of his co-workers, he went out for lunch twice during his shift, all paid for by the way, he didn't have to pay a dime for any of the exquisite food that he was having, and it was all provided by the company. And while Ashes of Creation isn't technically out yet, and we can't really play it, uh, we can take other games with similar people and similar situations like let's look at star citizen okay star citizen has dumped over 500 people have dumped 500 million dollars into the game and it's been in development for 10 years it's a nearly unplayable buggy hellish mess of a game unoptimized it's a complete joke to play it is just for 10 years and 500 million there is no excuses why it's in such a terrible shape that it currently is in other than well maybe the developers are spending 15 minutes a day if we're lucky doing quote-unquote work and then you know pissing away the rest of their shift in the the watering hole and going to their quiet rooms and using their eucalyptus towels on themselves when they come to work and having little meetings where they go to ballpark games and dance around on the camera and yay it's so inclusive and fun and yet if you ever complain that these games are a buggy mess, if you ever complain that these games are not up to par, that they should have worked harder on the games, if you ever dare speak out about any of these games, that the product is not worth the money, or that it should be way better for the amount of time and money invested into it, you get nothing but tons and tons of people that will rally against you and say that you're wrong. They'll say, it's just a beta. It's just an alpha. They'll patch it. They'll fix it. They'll release an expansion that makes it better. I mean, look at the game that you're watching right now. It's Albion Online, okay? It's 
Um, they had, you know, I think they got bought out by like sixty million dollars. I forget the exact amount. It could be maybe thirty million. I think it's sixty million though. And they've released one weapon line and no new zones. And they just they updated the art a little bit. Like nothing really much changed in the year. Very slow updates. Stupid patches. Everyone's leaving in droves. And it's like, they have millions and millions of dollars, okay? What is going on? Like, if someone was truly passionate and liked the product, they would be pumping out some good stuff. But everyone, you know, everyone's just okay with it. They're just contempt with it, okay? And I'm not saying Albion Online is one of the bigger examples. I'm more so talking about the AAA games that are just coming out recently that are just garbage. Like, remember Cyberpunk? Remember how many years and how much money they spent on that game? And while I genuinely liked the game, most people didn't. Most people had severe, horrible, horrendous bugs, and uh, but <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Okay, the industry standard is that these companies spend all this time and all this money, and the people working on these games are paid very handsomely. They're paid very livable wages so that they can have comfy, privileged and easy lives outside of work. So you can't say, well, I live in the ghetto and I got robbed and I had a bad day and I got beat up on my way to work because I had to take the public transportation bus and like three dudes jumped me and that's why I'm not doing a good job today. That's not an excuse for the these people in, in tech, these people with their fancy jobs, okay? And everyone just bends the knee and suckles on their toes and is absolutely fine with their quality of work. But, but here comes the but. When you flip the script and you change it around to, like, the fast food wagey to the person that works at the grocery store, the retail store, whatever, what have you, it is a complete different ball game. Everyone will band together to to be on the side of the customer the second that the wagey doesn't do um, uh, up and be above beyond perfect job, okay? So I'm going to tell you about an interaction that I had at Subway just yesterday, okay? I don't generally ever get to eat out because I don't really earn enough money, but I was blessed by a donation of $10, and that donation told me to get something to eat with it. So I searched online and I found a Subway coupon that was uh, that would get me a okay amount of food, a foot long sub. They're not really a foot long, as we all know. And while Subway isn't the most nutritionally best, it is. It does meet all the amino acid needs that I have, and it's it's an okay treat. Okay. So the donator wanted me to eat Subway, and generally Subway sandwiches in my area are over $13. But with an online coupon, I was able to get it under $10, barely no chips, no drink, just just a water, and that's fine with me, that's okay. You know, it's better than eating beans and rice that I normally have. So I place my order online, and um, it tells me that it's going to be ready in 30 minutes. Now this is not a busy Subway in a busy city, this is a completely dead Subway that has very low foot traffic, okay? And so I, I wait the 30 minutes before showing up. You know, the, the little screen online tells me that it's being built, you know, like five minutes after ordering it, and that it's completed like 10 minutes after ordering, but I waited 30 minutes. And then I, I show up to the subway, and um, there's, uh, there's th you know, three people working, quote unquote three people, right? And um, here's the thing with the three people. Two out of the three people were absolutely brand new. It was like maybe their first couple of days of working there, and that's fine. That's totally understandable. These were young teenagers. You know, it's their first job. I can see how nervous they are and how unconfident they are. I, I used to be one when I worked my first job as a bagger at a retail store. I was the same exact way, okay? But then there was one other guy in his mid-30s who was also new, maybe his first or second week, and he was technically working off the clock as per his conversation with his employees and me and other customers eating at the subway. So he, working off the clock, is trying to teach these two other people how to do their jobs, how to log into the reg register, how to ring things up, how to build the sandwiches, and, and so on, right? And uh, him himself also being new, his first or third week, uh, but him being the older one, I guess he, you know, was put in charge by the owner or he took it upon himself to, you know, stick around unpaid, by the way, to help out these two other guys instead of just leaving them out to dry because the owner can't be asked or bothered to train his employees or something. I don't know what the situation was uh, entirely, but I do know that the, the older guy who was pretty new, um, as per what his employees were, you know, they were calling him new as well. And uh, he was multi saying multiple times that he's off the clock, he can't log into the register, and so on and so forth, right? So I get there, they ask what I want, I mention that I'm an online order, and they're like, oh, crap, we didn't even start that. I'm like, eh, it's fine. You know, I'm very polite to, to people. 
uh, in real life. Maybe not online, of course, but I am a very polite individual. I'm very kind. And I tell him, you know, it's okay, man. Like, it's totally fine. I've been there before. I know what it's like. It's totally cool. I've got infinite free time. It's not a bother to me, right? I'm not in a rush. Take time. It's whatever, bro. And so, you know, they, uh, they, they pull the online order and they start making the sandwich. And I'm not hovering over them because, well, it's literally on a list in front of them of what they should do. And there's three of them. And so they make the sandwich and, uh, you know, they, they give me my food and I, I make small talk with them in the meantime, like, oh, I used to work at a subway. How much you make now? Back in 2009, I made $7.45. And uh, in 2022, as of September 3rd, this guy told me he makes $9 an hour. Okay. Uh, rent in my area is about... 1,400 if you rent from the worst of the worst ghettos in the highest crime rate part of town where police don't even dare tread, okay? The entire area is run by drug lords, gangsters, criminals. It's over-infested with disease and violence and crime, and that's the cheapest place to live, so I don't really have a choice, right? Uh, so $1,400 a month, and that is split, okay? You know, that is splitting rent with other people, okay? And, uh, this guy told me he makes $9 an hour, okay? So, I get home, and I open my sandwich, and it's not made correctly. It doesn't have the right amount of meat. I'm very peculiar about my macros, my protein intake, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, so I get a little, you know, I pull out the food scale, and I, and I see just how much meat they put on it, and I got skimped on the meat, that's it's whatever i'm not mad this is donation food anyway you know i didn't actually pay for it a donator did so i'm still thankful for that thank you so much for that ten dollar donation anyway um i also noticed that um the, the veggies are off it's missing some veggies um and it has no sauce and for everyone that's ever ate at a subway you know that the sauce is like the the core of the sandwich eating a dry plain sandwich with nothing on it no seasoning no sauce no 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 oil or vinegar or anything on it at all is just misery it's just i'm just chewing dry food at this point and you know it's it's still nourishing it's still going to fill me up and i'm still thankful for it but you know, these guys, they, they get paid nine bucks an hour and they messed up my sandwich. Do you know how most people would react? And I don't say most people being that like, oh, you know, whenever you go into a nice part of town that they're not going to act this way. No, the majority of people having worked, you know, retail and having spent a lot of time back in my day in fast food, I can tell you that most people react extremely aggressively, very negatively and very violently. So, the first thing that a normal person would do when they arrive late to pick up their sandwich, and it's not even been started yet, is they would begin yelling, berating, and cussing out the staff. They would begin, they just, they just completely lose their cool, they get red in the face, and they start screaming because their time is super important, and how dare you not make the sandwich, there's no customers around, what have you been doing this whole time, yada yada yada, right? Of course, I don't react that way because I have respect for my fellow human beings, especially my fellow low-down brothers, for those that don't know, a low-down brother, quote-unquote, is someone that is in the ghetto alongside me. It is not someone who grew up in a nice household, went to a nice school, has, you know, a big family that's going to get them that lawyer job that pays big money and stuff like that. No, it's someone that makes $9 an hour, and they, they probably grew up in a trailer park or a hotel or just homeless, because that's the majority of us these days, okay? And, uh, you know, I was formerly homeless, and, you know, when I did New World content, I started making a an actual livable wage for once for two months and i decided hey i need an apartment so i can continue making better videos but then new world died my income also died alongside it i'll be online and these story time videos do not they make pennies they make freaking pennies um so i pretty much survive off savings and once i run out of savings the channel's just gonna die don't worry i'll make a going away video when it does it's, i've got a few years left of savings so um may maybe a new game will come out and i will be a successful youtuber and if not well um you know uh, hopefully you had fun while i was able to make videos but anyway back to the story okay most people would react to the subway wagey making their sandwich wrong not having their sandwich ready extremely violently not only that but they would be up their butt, making sure that they make the sandwich exactly to their specifications and stressing them out the entire time, whereas I laid back and chilled and did nothing. 
Okay, and then when they got home and realized that their sandwich didn't have the proper amount of meat on it, they would probably call corporate, they would probably write a bunch of nasty emails and leave negative reviews, and they would probably come storming back into the restaurant and demand that the sandwich be remade or that they get compensated some cookies or something or and to make it properly and to give them the right amount of sauce that has no sauce. They'd probably throw the sandwich in the employees' faces may, and then, get you know, if they are of a certain type they might even start trashing the restaurant dumping the uh the trays that hold chips all over the floor stepping on them punching holes in the drink soda mountain or fountain machines just ripping up all the electronics on the desk where people pay pushing the register over smashing the monitors and just storming out all because their sandwich was made incorrectly so here's the thing to you let, let, let me talk just a little bit about for, for those that watch that have a livable wage. I believe that if Subway or just people in general wanted Subway employees to do a better job, that they would pay them a livable wage. $9 an hour is not a livable wage ever at $9 an hour, okay? So let's say you somehow were able to work four full-time jobs at $9 an hour, which means you would only have eight hours of free time per week for sleeping, eating, pooping, etc. So you would have to be some sort of time-bending wizard or work two jobs at the same time to even pull this off. But let's say you did. That would mean you would make about $75,000 a year if you rounded up, okay? We're going to round it up because maybe you got lucky and won some lottery tickets or something, okay? Um, so if you somehow manage to make 75000 a year and you also somehow manage to save half of every paycheck, which is not possible, and I'm going to explain why later, and if you never had what's called a rainy day where your car breaks down or your health acts up or your pet needs a vet visit or any of those kinds of things, if you just have the perfect life where nothing ever breaks and never have to spend any expenses... To buy a very basic house would take you, uh, let's see, that would be 10 years of working 160 hours a week to afford a basic house. So let's say, well, we all know that's not possible. So how about 80 hours a week? That's two full-time jobs. Well, guess what? That's 20, that's like 20 years of your life working to af just afford a basic house and maybe a car, okay? Okay. What if you only work 40 hours a week, which is what most people can do, and that's extremely exhausting, by the way, for those that don't work full-time. Uh, that's 40 years, four, zero, 40 years of your life in order to afford a basic house. And again, this is assuming the impossible, that you save half your paycheck every week, which we all know is not going to happen. Even if you live the most minimalist possible lifestyle where you don't have a cell phone, I personally don't have a cell phone. You only eat beans and rice, which I try to do most of the time. I, sometimes I have to eat, like, broccoli or chicken. I, I, it's, food is, like, my weakness, okay? I have to eat in order to stay swole. Um, but <laughs> beans and rice is, like, the cheapest possible food that meets most of, of the basic needs to survive and not die. It's not fun, but it is manageable, Okay. If you share rent with multiple people and you only buy clothes like every 10 years, like almost all of my clothing has holes in it. All, all my, my shoes, I've been wearing my shoes so long that the bottoms are just completely smooth. Like it's, I, I, it's a hazard to wear my shoes, but I'm not, I, I, I can't afford just, I, I gotta wait. Maybe, maybe, maybe in a couple months I'll, I might have enough money to be able to buy some shoes, but I, it's probably not. I, I probably got to fix a car or, you know, overpay for gas or food or, or rent's going to, yeah, my rent's probably going to go up because, um, the owners are going to sell it to a corporation and they're going to just nickel and dime you with all the stupid little crap. Like, uh, oh, you got to have a special trash can service. You have to pay for our special internet. That's not even really internet. You have to have cable, even though you don't watch TV. These are Nick things that these fucking companies will nickel and dime you for, okay? But let's just say in this scenario that none of this ever existed and you're content with eating your beans and rice every day, you don't have a phone, you share it with multiple people, you don't replace your clothing, you don't drive, you don't go to the gym, and you don't ever spend a single dime on video games or movies. There's a reason why I beg for games on my channel, because I don't have the, the means to buy them, and I have to have the games to make the YouTube videos to make the money to survive, okay? So let's just say in the impossible scenario that you spend zero money on your hobbies and etc. 
That's 40 years of working that subway job in order to buy a basic house. Okay, so of course no one in that situation is going to be a hard worker, okay, because they are literally working for nothing, all right? And then you might say, well, just get an education, bro, to make more money. So here's the thing about that. Not everyone can either afford the education. Not everyone can go through the educational process. Not everyone is smart. Not everyone is gifted. Not everyone is privileged like you are, okay? You could pay for my college or school or whatever, and I will never, ever, ever my brain cannot compute certain types of math. It is impossible for me to do so. There is no magic pill, no therapy, no class, no book, no YouTube video, no educational website that will fix this. I have tried. I have spent years and thousands of dollars on this, and it will not be ever be fixed. So there are a lot. Do you remember the kids in school that literally could not read? There are still pe- there are adults like that, okay? There are certain people that can't do certain things, and that's just life. That's just how it is. Okay, and then you might say, well, if that's the case, they don't deserve a livable wage. And to you, I say that you don't deserve a properly made Subway sandwich. Yet, for whatever reason, these people that work in game tech, game dev tech companies who make over $100,000 a year, or they work 15 minutes a day, maybe. That's their hard day, by the way. 15 minutes is a hard day, oh my no. And where they don't deal with customers, they don't deal with people screaming in their face, throwing sandwiches at them, committing violence, keying up their car because they made a sandwich wrong or something. They No, they don't have any of that. You know what they have? They have endless praise. Oh my god, your game is so cool. It's still an alpha. Oh my god, you're the best. Wow, this game is going to be so fun when it's actually ever properly made. Oh my god. And then you have this army of shills that your company pays for to masquerade as YouTubers that will praise your game 100% and try to influence people to play it certain ways that may or may not even be uh, efficient at the same time they will never naysay the game at all and you have you definitely have these in World of Warcraft you definitely have these in Albion Online almost every YouTuber for Albion Online has been bought out by SBI is signed their NDAs is on their payroll and they have specific talking points of things that they will approve on not approve on and, and so on and so forth uh, I am not one of those, of course. You you had them in New World. You you definitely have a whole lot of them in Star Citizen. You have, and you're going to have them in Ashes of Creation, if not already. I haven't bothered to investigate. Now, imagine if the opposite was true, where these game devs were held accountable for their actions. They did have screaming, angry, not violent. I never associate violence with anything good. Uh, you know, customers who just absolutely would not buy, would not support, and would not shill their products until they are absolutely, like, built. For Star Citizen, for example, the game literally takes 15 minutes to boot up and be playable. From the time I click the launcher and launch the game, let the game load, get into the game, and the game loads all of its assets, it's over 15 minutes. Okay, I can jump into Albion Online in like 10 seconds. I can click the launcher, hit play, the game loads, I click join world, I'm in in like 15 seconds, okay? That's a 1,000% speed increase over from one game to another. And again, it's just an alpha, it's just a beta. No, it's not an excuse, man. It's, you know what? It's 10 years and $500 million, okay? And you still can't fix that? I don't I don't think you're working. I don't think you're trying. I think that you're just sitting back and being lazy, and you don't deserve the praise that you get. Anyway, I just think that the world would be a better place if people stopped being so complacent and okay with video games just completely screwing over their customers. I mean, we saw what happened with Diablo Immortal, right? Like, oh my, what an absolute train wreck. Yeah, I can't believe that even is allowed to exist in society, right? And uh, But the fact that people get more angry over their, their food being like messed up or slightly wrong than they do with literal million-dollar game developers just making the worst possible product and just making an absolute buggy, unplayable mess is beyond me. I don't understand it. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'm Swole Benji. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you like the video, leave a like, okay? I read every single comment. Tell me what you thought about it. Feel free to argue with me if you want about any of these subjects. I'm down with it. I may not respond to every comment, but I do read them all. I make videos every single day on this channel, so if you enjoyed what you listened to or whatever, then feel free to subscribe and tune in for tomorrow's video. 
with that said also, if you are very financially stable, you have a nice job, you make lots of money, and you could, you know, you wouldn't miss some of it, then feel free to leave me a donation because I could really use some right now. Click that thanks button down below, leave a monetary donation, it'll show up in the comments, so it's kind of like a big flex. But only do it if you're if you're well off in life, if you're struggling and living paycheck to pay paycheck, you know, help yourself out first, okay? Uh, also, if you want to become a channel member, it's five bucks a month. You get access to private, more personal videos when you are a channel member that only members can see. There is a playlist in the pinned comment if any of those videos interest you. I generally try to make videos that are too good for the public for members only. Stuff that I wouldn't want leaked out to, you know, thousands of people. Just a select like little handful of like 20 people. That's all, all the members I've got is like 20 right now. So, again, it helps me out greatly. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Take care.